Toward the end of the Middle Bronze Age, around 1700 BC, a Tunguska class meteoritic airburst event. By the way, Genesis 19 describes that as 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 goprit vaesh, burning stone, not not brimstone. Bad translation. Burning stone and fire from Yahweh out of the heavens. Does that sound like something familiar to you? It does to me. And it exploded over the north into the Dead Sea, bringing the civilization in the land of the Kikar to a catastrophic end. And all those cities and towns, the entire human population and animals, even the agri- agricultural land itself, it was complete, a complete destruction. And it all happened in a fraction of a second. How do we know all this? Well, there's been a lot of research done. I'm going to introduce that to you. What's interesting about our particular airburst event is that most of these are exceedingly rare, and in not, not rare geologically, but, I mean, how many of us have experienced those in our life? It's not common, thankfully. Um, but in the past 5,000 years, there is only one of these events that has struck an urban region, an urban area. And that's why it's of such interest. What happens when one of these hits an urban area? And we have a good phenomenological description of that event preserved in an ancient text. It took place toward the end of the Middle Bronze Age. We know that from the archaeology at precisely the location indicated in the text, the land of the Kikar. It's exact, it's the right place, it's the right time, and it's all the right stuff. So that convergence of place, time, stuff, and story demonstrate the accuracy of the historical framework of those Abraham-Sodom narratives. So, let's go back to Rast and Mulder. Here's Rast. A destruction severe enough to account for the startling physiology of the Dead Sea region. Hmm. And uh, it's by no means impossible that a big catastrophe in the prehistoric times did live on in the memory of the peoples living around the Dead Sea. These should be heeded not on the basis of their etiological predispositions, I'm talking about Rast and Mulder, and their inadequate understanding of the Dead Sea region's wider archaeological record, but on the basis of simple, proper, scientific, and historiographical analysis. That's where it should go, and we should leave it there. Simply put, here it is. There is no textual, geographical, chronological, archaeological, or astrophysical evidence to locate Sodom in the cities of the Kikar anywhere but at Tal El Hammam. Everything else should be taken off the table. Now, the Sodom narratives carefully mark out a location for the cities of the Kikar north of the Dead Sea on the east side of the Jordan River where, in fact, the ruins of a significant Bronze Age civilization exist and were destroyed by a fiery cosmic cataclysm toward the end of the Middle Bronze Age. Such a high degree of correspondence between the text and the ground cannot be merely a coincidence. Cannot be. Well, if you want to read about all that stuff in detail, here it is, published in in 2021 in Nature Scientific Reports, a Tunguska-sized airburst destroys Tal Hamam, a middle broad city in the Jordan Valley near the Dead Sea. By the way, the follow-on paper to this with even more evidence has just been published and uh, in another peer-reviewed journal, and um, so that's pretty exciting. I just found that out before we got to this conference, and uh, very exciting. Uh, I was not on this paper. I refused to be a part of this. They said, why not? Because we're working on your stuff. Yeah, but you don't know, my, you don't know the archaeological community, the people that surround me. And uh, there's sort of a little bit of an anti-biblical bias hanging out there, and they just... You know, just don't put my name on it. Just talk about it. Well, they even mentioned in there that could could this airburst to be possibly the underlying uh, event that and the historical memory of such that gave rise to the story of Sodom. They They even they mentioned that in the paper, and I said, don't even please don't do that. (laughs) Don't mention it. Well, if we don't mention it, then somebody's going to point out why didn't you see that? Why didn't you mention it? So they mentioned it. 
And you should have seen the people come out of the crawling out of the woodwork. Accusing nature scientific reports of, of cave, caving to the biblicists and the biblical archaeologists. Oh, it was, it was pretty sad. But, um, and, and they made attempts to overthrow it, overthrow it, get it retracted, get it retracted. It went through four peer reviews, people. Four subsequent peer reviews. Guess what? Guess what didn't happen? Didn't get retracted. It's still there. It's still published. 